Hello, Pastor Jeff Tyndall here from John McMillan Presbyterian Church with our midweek meditations for March 24, uh, 2021. Uh, the last week of Lent as we move into Holy Week beginning this Sunday. And so I want to read something uh, from our scriptures today that sort of reminds me of Holy Week uh, from sort of a different perspective. Um, so let's get started with our scripture reading. It comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. Listen to and hear the word of the Lord. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed brothers and sisters about the hardships we have suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts, we felt the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we set out our hope that we will continue to deliver us, that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the glorious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This scripture reading actually uh, comes from a devotional that I've used uh, over the years from time to time. Uh, it is a devotional called uh, A Guide to Prayer for Ministers and Other Servants. And this is the Wednesday scripture reading it picks for uh, the week before Palm Sunday. And uh, when I read it, I understood exactly why it was picked uh, by the authors of this devotional. It's picked because it describes how Paul's life, that he was living the year before he wrote this letter uh, to the Corinthians, and to some degree our own lives in the past year, uh, 2020, where we had pandemic, we had politics, we had protests, uh, our triumvirate of troubles. Um, and how it is that we have uh, suffered uh, during these times, but also seems to me to indicate that our community together, uh, praying for each other and caring for each other and taking care of each other have been the source of comfort for so many of us, maybe all of us which then reminded me that that's exactly what Jesus was doing during Holy Week. He was suffering so that he could understand our suffering. And if he could understand our suffering, then he could save us from it, that he could offer us the comfort we need in our sufferings because he had experienced them themselves. In fact, many believe that's why God in, uh, became the incarnate Jesus so that he could experience the things that we experience as human beings uh, created in his image here on this planet. And so uh, I was sort of inspired when I read the scripture because it tells me that uh, we can spend Holy Week thinking about just that, thinking about the troubles we've had and the sufferings we've had and the uh, need for comfort we have had over the past year uh, and recognizing that uh, these are things that can actually be beneficial to us when we join together as a community, a community of disciples who care about each other, who care for each other, uh, and to give each other hope. Uh, because no matter what, 
the end result is uh, God gives us life and will give us eternal life. And so these things that we are experiencing now are just a moment uh, of uh, our eternal existence. And uh, we can receive comfort uh, knowing that Jesus was aware of it, uh, experienced it, suffered and died, uh, and then rose from the dead uh, to be in eternity with uh, the, the triune God and ultimately with us. So I think that gives us comfort, and I think that gives me comfort, and I think it's something we need to think about over Holy Week. So spend some time pondering uh, how it is that Jesus' suffering for us uh, certainly overcomes any sufferings we might have experienced over the past year or so. With that being said, that's all I got. Uh, now I want to share some announcements with you from the church. Uh, first of all, it is Holy Week that's coming up. And so we will have Palm Sunday, uh, 10 o'clock in the parking lot. Uh, we will also uh, be doing it on Facebook Live as always. Uh, our next service next week will be Maundy Thursday at 7.30 p.m. in the parking lot. Uh, we will have Luminaria and we will have a bonfire and we will have our traditional Tenebrae service. Uh, we are praying for good weather. Uh, keep in touch. But uh, regardless of the weather, we will be doing something in the parking lot 7.30 on Thursday to commemorate uh, Jesus' uh, sufferings during Holy Week. Friday, there will be a Facebook Live devotional time, uh, vigil, if you would have it, at noon. Uh, and of course, it'll be recorded, and so anybody can watch it for the rest of the day. Uh, but it is something we traditionally do on Fridays, and I, it will be done uh, via Facebook Live. There will be no parking lot service. And then Sunday, we will gather together at 10 o'clock a.m. in the parking lot to celebrate the resurrection and say, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Uh, Hosanna. To God in the highest. Um, and so that's going to be our Holy Week schedule. Uh, this Saturday is going to be the Easter egg hunt, uh, which will be at three to four or four to five, depending on which group you have entered your child in. So make sure that you uh, you get your kid there and get it read, get the kid registered first. Uh, it looks like the weather is going to be good, and that's really nice that we're going to be able to accomplish that. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to share with you is that we are going to continue to worship in the parking lot for the foreseeable future until uh, your session is uh, convinced that it is safe to return to the sanctuary. Frankly, uh, now I'm wondering if, say, that were to happen in June, uh, if the congregation would say, well, we sort of like it in the parking lot and that we're going to stay out there for the rest of the summer. I don't know how that's going to work. But so long as we're in the parking lot, you need to know a couple of things. First of all, uh, how we brought or stream and broadcast that service is going to be entirely weather dependent. Uh, if it is a beautiful day, we will have available to us all of the trappings from the new uh, technical uh, things that we have in the sanctuary. Uh, with the computer and with the screens and with the sound system. Uh, but if it's raining, we are not going to be able to take that stuff out into the parking lot. And so we will have to do it, the, quote, the old way, even though it's the own, you know, we've only been doing it since last March, which is basically on an iPhone in the parking lot. And so if it's raining, if the weather is bad, the sound and the, and the video are not going to be as good as they, as they would be if it was a beautiful day. Now, if it's stormy, if there's thunderstorm, if there's high winds, if we think it's dangerous to be in the parking lot, then the worship team will actually go back in the sanctuary uh, and we will uh, do the worship service stream from there. You can still come to the parking lot. We will still be broadcasting on FM 89.5, uh, but we leave that up to you. Just so you know, when you tune in, if you are doing it from home and you see that it is the old iPhone service, you'll know that it's probably raining. Or if we're in the sanctuary, you'll know that it's probably storming. But if we're outside and things look great, you'll know that the weather is great. Um, one great hour of sharing will be Sunday, Easter Sunday. So please participate in that if you can. Uh, and I think that's pretty much all I have in terms of announcements for this week. Uh, so let's get to some prayer. And what I want to do is I want to use this book uh, to offer a brief prayer, and then I'm going to recite uh, a hymn, believe it or not. 
So the prayer is the is actually a prayer of invocation that comes for uh, from this book for Palm Sunday, and it's it's this. So will you pray with me, please? Almighty God, you are the light and life of every soul, and our source of hope. Grant that in this time of Holy Week we may experience your transforming power, preparing us for the ministry of this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us this prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, a brief hymn. I'm not going to sing, but I do want to recite these words, because I think they're important. The hymn is, O Sacred Head Now Wounded. O Sacred Head Now Wounded with grief and shame weighed down, now scornfully surrounded with thorns, thine only crown. How pale thou art with anguish, with sore abuse and scorn. How does this visage language, which once was bright as morn. What thou, my Lord, hast suffered was all for sinner's gain. Mine, mine was the transgression, but thine the deadly pain. Lo, here I fall, my Savior, tis I deserve the place. Look on me with thy favor, vouchsafe me to thy grace. Good word, vouchsafe. What language shall I borrow to thank thee, dearest friend, for this thy dying sorrow, thy pity without end? O oh, make me thine forever, and should I fainting be, Lord, let me never, never, Outlive my love to thee. Amen. One last point. Uh, I have friends who live in Boulder, Colorado, and I have been in touch with them uh, over the past couple of days. And uh, one of them, who was, uh, in fact, a very dear friend of mine from college and who was my fraternal big brother, so to speak, um, told me that he knew three of the people who were killed at the uh, grocery store. Um, more to talk about that sometime in the future. Uh, what do we as Christians do with that sort of thing? I've preached on it too many times, uh, and uh, but it needs to be preached again. Uh, there simply needs to be some response, uh, and we'll probably address that you know, at some time after Easter. But for now, remember that the sorrows that they're going through are a blip in the screen because uh, I believe they are now, uh, as Paul says, uh, absent from the body, which means they are in the presence of God, and Jesus called that place paradise. So that's the good news that we preach, and that's the, the those are the words that I have of comfort for anyone who knew those people who were as su or are suffering with them. So that's all I got. See you Sunday. Amen.